I go get a truck and go get this Ram 2500. <laughs> um, they give it to me. And then, uh, you know, it was like, Hey, go down to the border and be the liaison officer. And they didn't know what that really meant because nobody had worked <laughs> in government affairs before. Right. And so we had a couple of state reps that were going down. The governor was going down and we had everything from policy on the border and, and supporting border patrol, which is what the Texas national guard did. We support the department of public safety in Texas state troopers. And then within that, we have the federal organization, which is border patrol BP. And so mm -hmm. in these sectors, you're getting hundreds of thousands, 2.6 million last year of people coming illegally across the, the Southern border, not just in Texas, but Arizona. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, as I'm going to be doing congressional travel right back to the days in the Pentagon, I need to go see this. And so I'm like, all right, I got a trip coming up in a couple of days with some state reps. Let me go down to McAllen. Let me go down to Laredo, Del Rio, everywhere. I drove 12,000 miles along the Texas border in like four Jeez. or five months. And I would just link up with the ground unit and I would go out with them on a mission or a couple missions. And we would just grab, you know, we'd chase drug dealers and the folks smuggling human traffickers. And then we would, you know, also see the families that are coming across trying to just get processed. So, yeah. I mean, it was, it was absolutely bananas seeing everything from the wall, the Trump wall, different parts of the wall to, you know, being on the Rio Grande. I mean, I've set foot on the Rio Grande everywhere from where it enters into the Gulf of Mexico all the way to El Paso um, and, and walked many of miles of that and have been kind of involved all around it. Um, yeah. It was, you know, as a Texan, as an American, it's, it's, um, you know, it is in a terrible situation. Um, what's being allowed to happen down there by federal policy. Mm -hmm. um, fentanyl coming across, you know, these people want a better life, but the, the border is controlled by the cartel. So these people are out on are robbed on average four to six times by the time they even get to the water. And then when they come across the water, right, they are processed. And within 48 hours, they are on a plane. They have a plane ticket or a bus now somewhere in the United States. And then they get a notice to appear in court, which has a 90 percent no show rate. Those folks right. are in the United States. And we have no way to track them. Yeah. So, you know, for the it seems small crazy town, to me that that's, yeah, that, that's it, it would policy. blow your it would blow your mind when you see the hundreds of people per hour that are coming across per hour. We were down. We saw a guy and, and you know, I'll send you some photos. We saw a guy transporting a mule, transporting folks across. And by the time we parked and you have to lock your truck when you're on the border, by the time we parked and drove back. There was 150 people that had come in on the road behind us when we were driving back. Jeez. Yeah. I mean, that probably it, happens uh, on a daily basis, I'm sure. It, it, hourly. Hourly yeah, it happens. Hourly. And all along that border. Um, I had the opportunity to be on, on do a boat tour with Department of Public Safety. We had some cartel folks on the south side. You know, we pull up and we had just turned the corner on the Rio somewhere and they were shuttling 15 people on a small raft across. And so we interdicted them and pushed them back. And now the thing is, those people, it's a fine line, right? If they're already on foot, we're not pushing them back because they're on U.S. soil, which yeah. U.S. U.S. soil down there is, you know, your yard to your neighbors. <laughs> right. Now you're under this whole different set. Well, those people now have paid, you know, three to five thousand dollars to even get access to the Rio. Now they don't get across. It's not like that mule is like, ah, oh, we'll try again. That mule is now charging them another three or five thousand. Right. You know, he's, yeah, he's, he's not giving their money it. back. Yeah. No, he's not. Man. And so it's a terrible, terrible system, um, for folks, you know yeah. what I mean? It almost seems like, and this is kind of just my personal view, but it, it almost seems like it would be better to just pour assets, pour resources to the border, process these people correctly, take their fingerprints, take their picture, you know, find out where they're going to go, maybe give them some food and water, and then maybe send them on their way. It's as well, so to... that falls under Title 42. So they're doing that, right? The, the, your point, we can't do that as state activated agents, right? The border is a federal mission. And so they need to provide... Bureaucracy, man. A... Yeah, they need to provide the resources to do that. Now, the, the problem is, right, in Del Rio, a couple of hundred miles, you can look, at, look where it's at. Yeah. Uh, but they have so many people coming across 
that the border patrol agents, it takes, you know, anywhere 40 to an hour, 10 to process one person. Right. When you have a thousand people in a day. Now these agents are processing those people do exactly what you're talking about, but no one's securing the border in their 500 miles because they're in the station processing. Yep. So, so everybody, so you got border? all these people that are, that are processing, but you got however many more <laughs> just coming through. Yeah. Just well, I mean, drugs, people, I mean, I like for perspective, man, I was down. In, what, one of the things I like to do when I was down on the border was in the evenings, I wanted to smoke a cigar <laughs> uh, uh, and look over the Rio Grande and watch the sunset on the Rio Grande. I knew, you know, by now I'd realize this is going to be a moment in time where I get to do and participate in, in, federal and international policy like this. Sure. And so I just wanted to sit at the end day and think about it and just just have a few minutes to reflect with the guys that were, that I was working with down there. And yeah. so we'd take a truck, grab cigars, sit there and in Laredo, in Laredo, in that one hour of sunset, a hundred yards from us. So picture this, you've got me, you know, clearly in a vehicle, you've got another buddy of mine in a vehicle and there's three or four of us, you know, cowboy hats like we are not locals right you've got 100 yards to the left a border patrol vehicle 100 yards to the right border patrol vehicle 200 yards further down border patrol vehicle okay you've got these guys and and the rio grande for perspective is only about 15 feet across right there okay these guys are fishing and they're putting loading vehicles in between us backing up with people running and jumping in their truck and driving off I look over, it just, sun had just set, I mean, just set dark, finishing the cigar. And I look over and 15 yards away, two guys are crawling on their hands and knees trying to get past me. Jeez. And this is in the course of an hour. I and, mean, they're not even, it's so bad that they're not even like trying to, there's not even, they're not, they're just coming right by you. They're, it's just like, they're not yeah, even I mean, trying to you, get down the river or, you know. It's crazy, man. You go and interact Amazing. with them. It's about an eight foot drop off. So, you know, in that case, you know, you, go chase them back, grab them, get them back to the water. But it was so thick down there in the brush and bush that yeah. you can't even see them. It's right. so thick and you're five feet above them. And so it was just a matter of time. So as I was driving out, I mean, I waited an hour, told BP guys, and, you know, I stayed down there. And as I'm driving out, they're trying to cross again. And if they run and get across, game over, right? They're now in and, and you're not going to get them. That's such um, a crazy, it's so crazy that if they make it, then that's it. You know, but if it's... Yeah, mm -hmm. what a weird concept, dude. Human smuggling and trafficking down there it, it it has forever changed my perspective of the the size of the problem, and, yeah. and it really is you know the recent change in administration. Before um, I had met the last two Department of uh, Homeland Security directors and had had a chance to talk to them about the changes, um, and they were looking at assigning resources away from the border because it was so secure. Yeah. So, so what you being down there, you talking to BP, you talking to local law enforcement, what, what's the solution? I mean, what, what are those guys saying? Obviously we need more people, yeah. but what, uh, what it, else? I mean, you remain in Mexico is a big one, right? And so we yeah. have to have the ability, if we bring you in that we don't even process you or we process you, but you have to remain across the border. Um, that, that will stem the flow of people into our country. Yeah that can't follow the American dream, right? If you're an illegal and you're not documented, you're not going to be able to thrive and live the American dream. Mm -hmm. You're always going to be looking over your shoulder, right? I think it's a multi-step process. That's a big one. Yeah. Um, the other, like do it the right way. Initially do it the right way. That way you can at least have a leg up on everybody else. That's right. And we should, yeah. we should figure out a way to do that. Right. Yeah. Um, I'm certainly not a, a border policy expert, just a small, part of the part of it for a little bit of time and you know but at the end of the day what we can't allow is 2.6 million undocumented immigrants to come in to to our country now let's say they are coming in what do we do with them then right because they are yeah. coming in. well i think you know i think you know we've done it the right way it's like if you want to be a sanctuary city why are you raising your hand when we're dropping off illegal immigrants to your sanctuary right. city you have said you're a sanctuary city you should get these 2.6 million people yeah, I mean, if you're willing to take them in, you know, and they say, I think that some of the argument is, well, you know, we're doing it, but you should also be doing it. Well, if you can't make a person do it, you know, if, if, if that area where they're coming in, if those people who live in that area 
don't want to or can't or have don't have the resources, then and you are willing to do it, then I, it makes sense to just transport those people to a place where they're going to be received with open arms, you know, where people well, that, are, that want to want to do that decided. kind of thing. Yeah, it's already been decided. If you you know these states came in and cities came in and said we are a sanctuary, so you're not going to go after illegal. Fine, then you can. You are saying that you have the resource to right. do it. Right. And it's not like in, uh, it doesn't have to be like a, like a point of contention. It just, it, it no. should just be like, well, no, oh, great. I'm, that's wonderful that you guys are doing this. Here right. they go. Here they are. Yeah. Take care yeah. of them. Yeah. I don't yeah. see what the issue is, right? I don't, I don't either. Yeah. Political theater. I'm like, look, you said this is what you want. Cool. Now deal with it. I, you uh, know, they blame, uh, they blame leaders uh, trying to sneak them in or using them as pawns, but I'm like, I, you could call it that. And maybe I, they maybe could have done it a little bit different, but at the end of the day, regardless of the, how they got there, you want, you're willing to accept them. So, you know, take care of them. Mm -hmm. And right. wouldn't you say, how would you, I mean, is a wall a thing? I mean, do you think a wall would, yeah, are the, that's, it is a thing, right? The, the. I mean, would it, is, is it uh, an effective measure, I guess? As I yeah, it absolutely is because it canalizes people into checkpoints. Right. And and the wall that we had before was like eight feet high. Yeah. Right. You, you're going to get over that. Now, sure. people will talk about the Trump wall and sections of it. And I've seen, you know, where the new sections were. And like, I've seen the whole thing um, because I drove it, you know, yeah. drove along it. And that wall in particular it's not a trump wall it was the wall that was done before so i'm not talking about that section of what they put in but i'm talking about the type of wall that was used before and what they were doing and it's a 30 foot barrier that is extremely difficult to get over now they're taking pvc ladders and they're doing it but the flow of people that can come across that aren't and we have sensors and lasers and everything to get over there right right um so you know you can stem that flow as much as we can and i think i think we should yeah, um, but there's also at least make it, that you don't need it, right? For, right. Big Bend, the whole area out there, you don't need that wall. Yeah. So nobody's coming across that way. Yeah, but I think, yeah. uh, in my mind, the border was way more secure than it is until I showed up down there.